Over 25 years as a strategic partner to global brands, nonprofits, industry speaker, author, and community leader. Born in Havana, Cuba, he told me he also spent time in Atlanta, which means, according to him, that he is a Cuban redneck, which I thought was a great line. That was spectacular. <laughs> He's traveled the United States, built a career centered on his multicultural heritage and cultural marketing. In his current role as senior vice president, directly involved with Mosaic Marketing, client relations and creative decisions, he fuses integrated marketing insight and strategy-driven approach to position clients, brands, and organizations for success in a rapidly diversifying marketplace. As Roberto said, he's going to talk about that thing that none of us want to address, and yet all of us have to, and it's the all-important issue of diversity. So let's give a warm welcome to Roberto. So I'd start off with this because normally I was growing up, if you bring your smartphones out or your phones during a conference, don't do that. Hide them. For me, no. Bring them out. Tweet about it. Talk about it. What I'm trying to do here in the next 10 minutes is to take something that's very uncomfortable and make it comfortable because it's important, it's what we're facing. I always start off any talk with this statement. Whenever you find yourself on the side of the majority, it is time to pause and reflect. So, some people say, Robert, how can you come up here and talk about a subject that in some areas are politically incorrect, that's taboo, that's well, can cause controversy and has known to, to cause activism because this topic is not only important to me, but it's very important, especially to nonprofits. It is time that we take what is uncomfortable and make it comfortable to have a productive conversation. Please check the box. I grew up with that. So what box do you fit in? What box do you check? Should I check the Hispanic box, Caucasian box? Should I check the African American box? Should I check the Pan Asian box, the Asian box, or the other box? <laughs> wow, true story. <clears throat> Myself, I was born in Cuba, but there's two halves to me. On my grandfather's side of the family, they're actually from Africa. So Afro-Cuban. My mom's side of the family is from Spain. And on top of that, one of my aunts is from China. So I check a lot of boxes. So this is why I'm here to start talking about what box do we need to check. When you look at this picture, this is a representation of the United States. It's actually a representation of the world. Can you pick out which one could be your donor? Could you pick out which one could be your sponsor, your activist, your community leader, the people that you're trying to help? Which box of these are you going to check? This is why it's important to understand that you never know who you're going to speak to or never know who's going to be in front of you. Story, I went to an event, and it was a charitable event in Atlanta, Georgia, sitting around this big table, big aquarium in Atlanta, and they were talking about, you know, I really need to reach the Hispanic community. I don't know how to do that. We're the community leaders. I'm trying to reach it. And then this conversation, <laughs> this gentleman came in as a waiter came in and started bringing, you know how they bring the salads out and the drinks? Then he said, Roberto, I go, hey, what's going on? He gave a hug. Well, he's a community leader. He has one of the biggest communities in Atlanta. Who would have thought a waiter at an event? You see, you don't know which box to check. That's why we have to start opening up and start deciding, how do we start this conversation? Who do we need to reach? Who do we need to invite? Our keynote speaker this morning, he, raised, said, he said, raise your hand if you're Asian. Well, I could have raised a quarter of a hand. Raise your hand if you're Hispanic. He didn't say, I guess I probably would have been one of the few. The thing is, we need to look at diversity, not as a segmented group, but it's part of a whole group that can actually bring <coughs> unity to get your main mission and your main cause 
out to the public. Three words I grew up with. Ethnic. You're an ethnic guy. <laughs> Racial. Oh, please do not say that word in any sentence in anything you write. The last thing you want to do is speak about it. Diversity. What is diversity? These three words were created for what? To put us in the box. To identify who we are and how we need to talk to each other and how we need to help each other. These words need to be taught, need to be known, but also need to be erased from our vocabulary also because they are limiting your ability to communicate and direct your attention to what's important. What is it? Your cause. To help. To help communities grow. Assumptions. People make a lot of assumptions. They go, well, you know what? I don't, know if I, can, I, don't, I don't even know if I can put together a package for the Latino community. They don't have any money. I don't think they have money. Or half of them, I think half of them are not legal. I don't know. Or you know what? If every time I walk through African American community, I'm scared. There's gangs going on. Or Asian American, are they really growing that fast in our community? All these are assumptions that we need to break through the barrier. Did you know that the second largest, richest man in the world is from Mexico? One of the top 10 richest men in the world, four of them are have cultural backgrounds, or two of them are Hispanic. Those are large opportunities to reach out to them. But if you deny your ability to have that hard conversation, then you're gonna deny your opportunity to reach out to people that can help. And also can be your sponsors within the community. What's happening in the United States? Look at this. By the year 2050, these are staggering numbers. Staggering numbers. I was on the board of the Boy Scouts of America, and I went up there, and what is the Boy Scouts is really to empower our youth to become great leaders in the next 100 years. Well, they just had their 100-year anniversary. Now, they haven't really reached out as much as they could to minority communities, what do you think in the next 100 years, the 200 year anniversary, would happen if they don't reach out to the fastest growing communities? Could that institution be gone? Those are questions. Again, my 10 minutes here is not to solve a problem, but it is to direct you guys' attention to a very important subject. Before we go into it, when I was a kid, when we came over here, we had these little categories. You know, everybody knows about the census, right? And in that little box, before there was a lot of boxes, the box says Hispanic. My grandfather was really funny. He says, he says, Roberto, I just found out I'm Hispanic. <laughs> <laughs> the US government told me I'm Hispanic. All he knew, he was a guy that came from Cuba to work in the United States. It's something to laugh about, but you know what? I look back in the 70s, and then I look back now. Do you know that myself, U.S. citizen, have to walk around with a passport? And in some southern countries, I mean cities, they pull you over. Name is Gomez. What's the first thing you think they expect? I wonder if he's a, I wonder if he's a U.S. citizen. I have shown this twice in cities in the South. What happened? We're going back or we're going forward? We need to address the issues. We need to have a conversation. So here, I'm going to go through some points that will help you reach out to the communities. This is not about Googling. This is not about going to a study. This is very basic. Start with the connection. It's why we're here. All of us are here to connect with each other to make things better. Make things better for our family, for our culture, for our community. How do we do that? Well, the first thing is the need to be seen. How many Hispanics are here? Raise your hand. The need to be seen in the community. The need to be seen. Connection is a result of authenticity. As you connect, they see you, they say, hey, they're part of it. 
the belief of belonging. People want to belong to communities. They want to belong to each other. Also, the willingness to do something without guarantees. I've seen marketing firms say, hey, let me do a little program inside the Hispanic community. It doesn't work and then pull out. No, it's longevity. It's being there for a while to be seen. Now, this is a subject that is hard. We just... And it's hard to sit down and realize to bring in forth a conversation that's going to help everyone connect better and improve <coughs> the communities and also reach deeper into you guys' support as an organization. Thank you so much. Muchas gracias for allowing me to be here and share this with you.